Let's begin with Lyft because shares are in the red after posting results. For more on what drove the quarter, let's go to Deirdre Bosa, who's been listening into the conference call and is more with us now. Deirdre. Brian, I have been listening. And, you know, in the ride sharing space, we've moved from having a path to profitability to who can shorten that path by the most. Uber, of course, upping the ante last week when it said it would be adjusted EBITDA profitable by the end of this year, earlier than expected. Investors may be looking for Lyft to push up its timeline as well from the expected late 2020 target that it outlined previously. Now, when I spoke to CFO Brian Roberts earlier today, he said that they would be addressing that timeline on the call. But so far, and we're about 30 minutes in. We haven't heard anything. We'll certainly let you know when and if that does happen. So far, CEO Logan Green has said that Lyft is simply making progress on that path to profitability and how it'll get there. Have a listen. We expect to deliver continued strong top line growth in 2020 while also making progress on our path to profitability. As we've discussed on prior calls, there are three key themes that we're focused on. First is product innovation. Second is profitable growth. And third is operating leverage. Now, CFO Brian Roberts has been speaking on the call for about 10 minutes already and still no mention of any change to that profitability timeline. So despite a beat on the top and bottom lines, Brian, as you noted, shares are down more than 4% in the after hours. Remember, it did rise on the back of Uber's earnings when it did move up its timeline. Now, another key question that's likely to be asked during the Q&A portion is the impact of regulations. While Uber has been making changes to its platform, Lyft is observing them, it says, and focusing on a ballot initiative that could exempt them from that gig economy law known as AB5, which could require the ride sharing companies to treat drivers as employees versus independent contractors. Uh, Robert's telling me earlier that the company's 2020 guidance assumes the status quo. Like I said, Brian, that call's still going, so we'll continue to monitor and bring you anything if it changes the direction of uh, stock price in the after hours. Yeah, investors don't like it in the early reaction. Long way to go, dear Jabosa. Thank you very much. Guy Dom, yes, let's sir. talk about it. Okay, so you got the, the, the Lyft CEO talking up a couple of things. One of them is profitability. Wouldn't you like all three to be profitability, profitability, and profitability? Yeah, and they addressed this a few quarters ago. And I, listen, I think this was a very good quarter. I think the reason the stock is down is because it's gone from 38.5 to 53.5, basically in a straight line. And I think people are taking profits on the back of this. If you look, though, in terms of margins, contribution margin, 54 percent. This time last year, 45 and a half percent. All the metrics are better. And quite frankly, I think what scared people might be the full year guide. But I think this is a stock that probably got ahead of its skis in terms of the stock price. It's going to do a little back and fill. And again, I've said this for a while. I don't think it's going back to that 63 level that it failed at a while back. But I think the high 50s is absolutely in the cards. Well, more focus on profitable rides, whether it's airport rides and, and whatnot, are certainly something to talk about. But to, to get away from structural profitability issues that we thought were a big part of this transportation as a service sector uh, out of the gates is, is crazy to think that suddenly we can have gone from a place and the stocks represent, look, up 24 percent year to date, uh, up 12 and a half percent into this print over the last five days. It's not a huge surprise when you don't get uh, this renewed kind of fuel for the fire of profitability. To be clear, they were ahead of Uber to talk about profitability. They are ahead of Uber. They have a simpler business model, but profitability and rationalization in terms of the yep. competitive landscape between these two folks, I, I'm not sure is, is here yet. You know, you know, Karen, listen, they are domestic to Tim's point. They do not have the food delivery business. They're trying to remain stable. But, you know, you look at the analyst community. There's 38 analysts that cover the stock. Why? I don't know. But there's 30. The high price target, the high yeah. price target is 90. The low is 35. The median is 65. The analyst community has no visibility into $55 price difference uh -huh. in targets. That is interesting. I think, though, when they're talking about profitability, I think they're getting to break even as the sort of first measure of profitability. And then I think talking about margins is how do they grow this business and grow the margins? I actually like Lyft. I agree with Guy. Had it not been up so much into earnings, I think this would have been an okay uh, very, very okay. We'll see what he says on the call about does the timeline change any. That's going to be really important. But I actually like it for the reasons you said. It is a cleaner sort of story 
than Uber. Yeah, I would just mention this. That, you know, obviously, it's a two-horse race as far as the product is concerned. I think the last thing you really want to do at this point, this far away from profitability, is see these companies tripping over each other to kind of get ahead of their skis, to kind of get too aggressive on their guidance. Because to your point about profitability um, and visibility and investor visibility, and then obviously the analyst community, I mean, at the end of the day, you could, you could obviously um, you know, drive a truck through that sort of sentiment. Um, I just think that, listen, they've laid out out their guidance when they're going to get adjusted EBITDA, you know, whatever that means, because that really doesn't mean profitability. But I think investors want the path towards it. And I'll just say, you know, kind of the last point here is that this stock broke out of that 50 level. It's been below there for, I don't know, five months or so. Um, I think investors are kind of comfortable on how these guys are going to get to that 2021 <laughs> guidance. I don't think you want to see it's, them get too far ahead of it. It's well, a weird world, Guy Adami, because yes, you've you got this yeah. discussion. We talk about this company you might have heard we can also talk about Lyft. Tesla. You might have heard about it. Sure. Mentioned a few times. A few. And everybody talks in the bull case of Tesla is autonomous cars. They're going to drive us around. We won't need ride sharing. Or if we do, it will probably be in some sort of Tesla or Tesla related. Yeah, maybe. Thing. Or maybe that's the existential risk to Ford and GM and the reason why those stocks have traded horribly over the last six or seven years. I don't know. I, and I think you make a fair point. I don't think it's the death knell for the Ubers and the Lyfts. I think you have to decide which is better, which is better situated, which has a better platform right now. And I'll continue to say it's Lyft. Now, again, I think the run up has been such that it makes sense people are taking profits. But you just look at the numbers. The numbers are improving. You know, you're talking about 36 percent revenue growth quarter over quarter. And year over year, it's going to be about 28, 29 percent. I think that's an interesting play right here. And again, 48 and a half is where you get back in the name. But when you think about it, you, you, it's interesting you bring in the Tesla valuation because at least with Tesla, there's all kinds of pie in the sky you can incorporate in terms of their data, in terms of their battery pack. Um, this is ultimately, you know, it's, it's a service revenue dynamic. For them to get to that, that Q4 2021 EBITDA positive, they're going to have to grow trip growth by 20%. They're going to have to grow uh, ARPU, or average revenue per rider, so I changed around a little bit, by 15%. But that's pretty straightforward. Um, it's not a case where you can take you know, a valuation and begin to start you know, extrapolating all kinds of growth prospects. Wait, I don't think you can. Let me, let me make one other point. You know, we're talking about a company that you said, yes, they went public at 72 bucks, is trading at 52 bucks. They put $3 billion in cash on their balance sheet. So that actually preserved their you know, ability to kind of get to whatever those targets are to get profitable. And the other thing I'll just say is you talk about data, you talk about an existential threat to the car makers. Someone's going to have to make the cars that are going to be autonomous on Lyft and Uber's network. So this company, you know, people talk about when was Apple going to buy Tesla? This, uh, this company will get bought by, someday by a massive data company. It could be an Apple. It could be a Google. It could Not be a GM. Uh, well, it could be Tesla. Who knows? I'm just saying, if you're looking to vertical integrate, I just say at this market cap with that cash position, if they can accelerate their profitability, at some point, this is not going to be a $13 billion enterprise company. It's, Brian, I'm not sure if you're aware that, that Guy Adami actually was working oh, yeah. for Lyft at some point. And Guy, I wonder, with the whole talk about employees actually being, well, I mean, drivers being counted as employees, I did, and you had have you hat. thought about coming yeah. back to the, the squad? Cracks, they've called me a number of times. I was yep. one of their early drivers. Yep. Hopefully, the crack staff back in EC is searching. For, the, for the footage, because the footage is wonderful. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Look at me <laughs> look with at my... Harry. Look there at the is. white gloves. Now, that's what we call white glove service, Brian. Look at that. Just watch. Ooh. What Ooh. a genius. Sounds like you just... It's great, but at the end yeah. of the day... Yes, sir. At the end of the day, and Lyft PR will be on the phone in 30 seconds after Why? I say this. Why? Do you Why? want to invest in a taxi company? I, well, I mean, I don't necessarily... Uber's original name was Uber Taxi. I know, it's it's so pretty, you're being difficult for the sake of being difficult. Okay. Think about how... Being dis difficult for the sake of... Think Good about time. how disruptive these two companies that did not exist 10 years ago are to massive industries, to public transportation, to the auto yeah, they, industry. They've the destroyed list driving on in New York City, so, I can yeah. tell you that. Yeah. I can't get a taxi anymore. They've yeah. driven up the price, but it's for another show, maybe. Well, the, the medallion business, let's not get into that.